Hey guys, JC here. Do you know what the most annoying damn thing is? When you fry something on your flight controller to where when you plug in a USB cable, you don't get any power. You get nothing. Now this doesn't mean the entire flight controller is fried, because you can still power it through a 5 volt source like linear ESCs or 5 volt regulator. I'm just going to take these wires and uh, hold it up to a 5 volt power source. Oh, and look, we get power. But do you know why that is so damn annoying? Because sometimes I just want to go into beta flight without having to plug in a LiPo battery. That way I can make all of my configuration changes, I can test my receiver and modes and stuff like that. So yes, the flight controller will still work without USB power, but it's damn annoying. So how do we fix this? Well, usually it's a diode. What is a diode? A diode lets electricity flow one way, but not the other way. And the reason for that is because, uh, let's just say we have our LiPo battery plugged in and the USB cable plugged in, that way we can calibrate our ESCs or something like that. Then the power coming in from the USB is not going to conflict with the power coming in through the LiPo battery. Because if that were to happen, something would probably fry. On this specific flight controller, which is the SP Racing Mini, which is just known for frying things left and right. So first you need to spot your diode. And I'm going to go ahead and say this doesn't apply to all flight controllers. Every flight controller, the circuitry is different, but uh, this will apply to, to most. Anyway, so let's find our diode. Well, I see one right here. It's this little rectangle with two legs on one side and one leg on the other side. Could that be our diode? I don't know, let's find out. So your USB plug thing, the entire thing is a ground, so if we put our multimeter on a ground right here and a ground here, yep, we get continuity. But what we were actually looking for is power. At least with the orientation of this USB, and I say that because Everything's different. This could be up, but this could also be up. Uh, there is no up. You just have to know how USB things are wired. Long story short, I know for a fact that this one all the way to the left is my power. And then if we put this on the diode, oh, I'm not getting nothing. Not getting anything there. Oh, but wait. Yep, there it is. I did that on purpose. I knew it was that leg. Not to mention, I can just look and see the circuitry, and it runs from that pin to that diode, so I cheated. Let's plug in our USB cable and get some power going to it. Now I'm going to set my multimeter from continuity mode to the voltage mode. This is so hard doing it on camera. So on this leg where the power wire is running, Ah, oh, screw it. I give up. I can't do it on camera. It's bad. I know it's bad. Okay, so how do we replace it? Well, first you need to purchase a new diode. Um, I, I can't remember the part numbers off the top of my head or websites, but I'll just flash it on your screen right now. You can also look in the description below. So you've purchased your new diode. Now how do you remove it? You're probably going to want some uh, solder flux or flux paste. You can get this off of eBay for pretty cheap and it lasts for, forever. I'm also going to use some solder paste, once again off of eBay. And you will also need a hot air gun. I'm not moving the camera, I'm lazy, but I'll flash a picture on your screen. I'm just using like, I think it's like 35 bucks off of eBay, something like that. But it, it works great for $35. And it, it's actually paid for itself. With all the repairs I do, I save all kinds of money. I'm going to take the flux paste and we really don't need that much at all so I'm just going to kind of get some coming out the tip. Ooh, too much. I'll just take my razor blade and kind of take a little bit from there. Put some on one leg, put some on the other legs, and that's it. Like I said, you, you don't need much at all. Now I'm just letting my hot air gun heat up for a minute. Now I will take my ceramic tweezers, once again, eBay. 
And when I put this hot air gun on it, I want to angle it like this way because I don't want all the heat going everywhere because you can actually melt your processor and any other plastic component. So I'm, I'm going to try to focus the heat this way. Just kind of move it around in circles or small circles. Like I said, you kind of want to focus the heat as much as possible. And I am lifting up on this diode and the weight of the fly controller will actually separate the two. Uh, you don't want to put this in like a vise or a clamp or anything. Oh, there it goes. That's how small this joker is. That's small. Uh, but what I was saying is you don't want to put this in a clamp or anything and pull on it really hard because you can actually lift the pads off and uh, at that point your fly controller would be trash. At this point we're done with the hot air gun. You can put it away. I know some guys put new components on with a hot air gun but I don't like doing that because I like to minimize my risk of melting anything. This time I am putting my fly controller in. I'm actually just using a helping hand. That's good enough. Now that my soldering iron is nice and hot, I'm going to take some solder wick, eBay, and try to remove as much of the solder as I can. Okay, now we've got some really nice clean pads with all the solder removed. I'm just going to take some solder paste now and put a little bit of paste on all three of those pads. Once again, I'm just getting a little bit out the tip and using my, uh, my razor blade to apply it. Okay, I was a little messy with it, but that's good enough. Now taking the ceramic tweezers, God, this is hard to do on camera. I'm going to try to place this right where it needs to be. Okay, I can't do this on camera, so uh, basically I'm going to hold this in place with the tweezers and then use my soldering iron and just place some heat on the legs and the solder paste will turn into a solid. Wow, that was a horrible job. It's crooked as hell. But it should work. At this time I will now take some flux remover and spray it on the area that we worked on and use a brush to like clean it up. You don't want any flux or solder paste anywhere because that could potentially uh, make the legs arc or you know they could ground against one another. Alright let's try it out. Wish me luck. And we're back in business. If you heard my computer, it's connecting. And that's basically it guys, just one more random fix for you. I'll leave some links to my playlist in the description below and top right of your screen, so check those out for other helpful videos, and I will see you again soon.